What's up, everybody? Um, I'm back with another boot review. This time I've got my uh, third third good boot purchase, and it was the tried and true uh, OG uh, third good mock toe wedge sole uh, steel toe and tobacco. Uh, the model number is 804 804428 and uh these are probably my most worn uh pair that I know that I can think of uh my first pair that I did on the first third good boot review it's probably they're probably close pretty close to these um, these ones I've probably seen a little bit more harder labor intensive wear, uh, cause I was employed by the state road for a little while and I wore these, you know, patch and patch and black top and that stuff's pretty nasty. Uh, black top has a lot of tar in it. So the, the stuff just sticks to the boots. And there's a lot of like black staining on the leather in places where that tar is just stuck to it. And it'll probably have to just wear off. Um, so uh, the first pair, which is the left boot, uh, you know, all the stitching on the vamp, the counters, good shape, no loose stitching anywhere. The trouble spots are still holding down, holding good. Uh, the back strap stitching is all still good. Nothing's out of place there. Nothing's loose. And my outsole. Uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, Max Wear Wedge uh, USA made slip and oil resistant wedge sole. It's a it's a polyurethane uh, material. That the sole's made out of nice and squishy and bouncy. It wears a long time. I mean, I've got a lot of miles on these, and I've only got, you know, a little bit of wear. I do have some places that I've stepped on things, like right here. I've stepped on a, a lawnmower blade on the edge, on the actual cutting edge of the lawnmower blade, and it it cut the outsole, and then it eventually it chunked out. And then I got another cut right here. Um, I, that, I don't know what I stepped on there that caused that. But it'll probably eventually chunk out too. And then on the bottom here, we've got a place that's kind of chunked out. Um, all the places I've stepped, it's, it's really hard to tell what all I stepped on. I know, I remember the lawnmower blade. But as far as the rest of it, I don't know. I don't remember what I've stepped on. Um, these do have a little bit of separation going on with the the uh, midsole is starting to separate from the actual welt right through here. I don't know if it's coming up or not, but the uh, yeah, if you peel it up, peel it. You can see the crack open up a little bit. Hopefully the stitching holds on that because I think. Uh, yeah, that should be stitching holding that together. So we'll see about that. Um, these boots are running on original uh, factory laces and hardware. Nothing's, no outlets have pulled, pulled out. No speed hooks have, have twisted or broke off or anything the solid brass machine uh speed hooks they just hold up and uh of course i've got the back strap or the the uh pull loop still still hanging in there nothing it ain't even broken to yet and uh as far as i can tell that's probably about it on on this on this one i'll go to the the right boot so you can see it and we've got much of the same thing going on here original laces and hardware 
uh, everything's still holding holding good there. The mark toe stitching on both boots is still still holding up just fine. Lace uh, the stitching on the main van to counter seams holding up good. The trouble spots are still uh, setting down nice and flat, holding strong. Uh, overall, the back strap stitching, it's all still nice and tight and solid. Nothing's broken loose there. Uh, the outsole on the right boot seems to be in better shape than the left boot. I haven't really stepped on anything to cut it. It don't look like, but we are getting a little bit more wear through here than on the left than on the uh, left boot for some odd reason. Uh, starting to wear some thin places out right through here, but uh, looks like there's still a lot of life left in the outsole. Uh, we do have some uh, some outsole separation from the midsole going on right through here. If you peel that open, you can see it's starting to separate a little bit. Uh, but that's not going to bother me too much uh it would take a lot for this sole to come on off and if it does why you can get them resold for you know third good will probably charge 150 bucks but locally i could probably get them resold somewhere by a cobbler for maybe 100 bucks um but uh yeah this uh these boots seem to be holding in, holding up pretty good. A uh, little bit of separation going on in a few places, but, you know, a lot of people would get, you know, upset about the little bit of separation, but uh, when you think of the miles that I've got on these and, and the amount of wear and tear, uh, they don't bother me a bit. I mean, they're still plenty of the rest of the sole is still holding on tight all the way around so I mean that little bit right there is not going to hardly affect anything you could probably just you know squirt you a little bit of shoe glue or something in there and and glue that back together and it'd probably hold for another a uh, few years or so but these are work boots they're not a you know they're not a fashion item they're not a they're not a tennis shoe or a sneaker so uh, you're gonna wear them. You're gonna wear them out. You're gonna you're gonna tear tear them up and stuff. Uh, they do kind of need a little bit of conditioning. I haven't conditioned them in a while, but I plan to, you know, clean them up and and condition them as much as I can. Try to maintain the pliability and the softness of the leather. I don't have any. Uh, cracking going on anywhere that I've noticed uh, of course you got your normal crease right through there where the where it actually bends when you walk and you've got the creases up the shaft where you know your foot is bending around in them but you know there's no there's no actual cracking going on anywhere um, the boots seem to be holding up pretty well and uh the future boots uh, eventually I'd like to get a pair of these in the uh, trail crazy horse leather uh, and change it up from the tobacco just to have a different different type of leather uh, but I would expect the same exact you know durability and wear and, and longevity out of the the other brand the other uh, model with the tobacco or the uh not the tobacco but the trail crazy horse uh so that's uh that's my third good uh wedge sole mock toe steel toe and tobacco uh eight inch tall boots uh all my boots are are usually eight inches tall at least i've got a couple that are six inches tall that uh, I found for really good deals or they were free uh, via boot vouchers uh, deals like that you know I guess like might as well but I don't wear the six inches very much 
uh, mostly I'm going to be eight inches and up on the on the boot heights. Uh, the American flag tags are all they're still holding up fine. Uh, a lot of times those kind of get wore off. Uh, after so long, they'll probably catch on something and they'll just rip them off or, you know, maybe some kind of chemical or something you you get into will eat them off or something. But uh, mine are still holding on pretty good on both boots. This one here's got more staining to it. But uh, <laughs> if you lift the tag up, you can see a nice perfect square where the that tag sets all the time but the leather's been protected right there from the with that tag so you got a nice little square uh perfect square mark right there that's funny uh, but yeah solid boots and uh when people think of thoroughgood boots they about 90 percent of the time will think of these exact boots uh, so these are about as iconic as it comes. I mean, you got some other brands. You've got Carolina makes a boot similar to this. That's a it's a domestically made mock toe wedge sole. Um, of course, you got the Red Wing Heritage. You know, ten ten eight seventy sevens. Uh, those don't use speed hooks. Those are eyelets all the way up, which. I'm not a fan of. I know that's more traditional, but uh, I find that the eyelets all the way up can be a a pain to lace up and unlace. Now there is some tricks you can do with that, like take the end of your laces and, and tie knots in the very end of your laces so they don't pull back through the eyelets. And then all you gotta do is just loosen everything up down through there and then you can get your foot out and then put them back on and then tighten everything back up. But the way my feet are, as wide as they are, it's hard for me to get past the instep in a boot that's partially still laced up, just loose. Uh, so to get my foot out of, out of the boots, I have to actually unlace the boots all the way down to the eyelets and then pull the eyelets you know, loose in the part um, to get my foot out. So those those tricks don't really work very good for my feet. Uh, these are double E width. And uh, as you can see on the sides here where my feet are, they're still, they'll still bulge out a little bit. So I probably could use another E width on the, on the width of these. But I don't know. I don't know if they make a triple E in the mock toes. I can't remember. I've not seen them. Uh, I've got two uh, local places that are Thurgood dealers that are close to me that I've uh, shopped at and looked at boot Thurgoods, and I think, as far as I can tell, they only make go up to a double E in the mock toes, which is perfectly fine. I mean. It doesn't bulge out too awful much, and I'm not standing on the welts so bad. You know, it's not rolling over the sides, and I'm just completely walking on the welt. Uh, the, the boot still maintains its somewhat straight form uh, for the most part, so the double width works. I mean, it's not it's not hurting the boots at all. It, it, it bulges out a little bit, but not not nothing crazy. So I can get by with double E width and these just fine. Uh, these are uh, nine and a half, I believe. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're nine and a half uh, double E's, which is my usual go-to size, unless obviously unless there's some stocking issues uh, that they don't have the nine and a half then I'll go down to a nine and I can wear a nine just as well as a nine and a half I and mean, it's only a sixteenth inch of a difference between half sizes so uh, I believe that's going to do it on these uh, there's really not a lot to these boots they're they're just a simple made quality 
American made boot. And uh yeah, these uh these third goods here, they're they're pretty hard to beat. I mean these are about as synonymous as it gets when it comes to mock toes. So uh yeah, I highly recommend these boots. Uh, if you're looking for a pair of uh, wedge sole mock toes, uh, steel toe or non-steel toe, Thurgood makes this boot in both. Uh, so, you know, either whatever, whatever your needs are, um, I highly recommend these boots. They will last you years if you take care of them. Uh, so... That's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to see uh, all my videos, they're all listed down through there. Uh, go through and check out some of my other videos. I've got all kinds of stuff on there. I mean, from uh, military ration reviews to uh, cigar content, uh, truck pulls, tractor pulls, mud bogs. Uh, farm work stuff on the tractor that I do. I mean, these are all my my hobbies. So, and that's what my channel's about. So, whatever I'm doing, you know, outside pretty much is uh, basically what's going to be in here. And I mean, these boot reviews. I decided to go ahead and do these boot reviews because you know these are uh, all the boots I own are pretty, pretty iconic boots. So, uh, and I figured y'all would like to see the boots that I wear pretty much on a daily basis. So, uh, yeah, that's go ahead and check out some of my other videos and there's plenty more videos coming down the pipeline. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to hit that like button, uh, comment and, uh, subscribe to support me to keep me going so I can keep making content. Uh, it really helps helps the channel out and helps me out because uh, you know boots ain't boots ain't cheap. <laughs> so, uh, but I've I've bought all of my boots with with my own money, so there's no there's no no worries there. Just you know help you know help them supporting me and supporting the channel. It it'll it will eventually allow me to. You know, buy better filming equipment, buy, you know, better cameras, better, better sound equipment. Um, all that stuff helps make better videos. So, yeah, go ahead and, uh, go ahead and do all that for me and, uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Later.